What's going on, guys? This is the Poke Tea Time Podcast, where we serve you up a cup of the hottest takes on what's going on in the Pokemon community. I'm not Shivam, and I'm joined by three special guests this evening. We got Crystal Pokemon TCG, Old School Pokemon, and Palatine Pokemon TCG. Good evening, guys. How's it going? Good. How you doing? How are you doing? Hanging out, just hanging out. Just got got some legends on the podcast this evening. It says I have no sound. Why do I think I have sound? Testing, testing, testing. I'm getting sound from you guys too. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they should be able to. Uh, no, they said never mind. All right, we got a pretty interesting podcast this evening. Uh, it's basically about getting expert advice on how to have a successful business in Pokemon and investing in Pokemon. These guys have been in the Pokemon hobby for a considerable amount of time. They've been around through multiple iterations of different kinds of cycles within the Pokemon market. And um, yeah, the, these guys just know what they've been doing for quite some time. Know whether the market's up, they've been successful. And whether the market's been down, they've been successful. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, have you guys kind of introduce yourselves. And then we can go ahead and get into uh, kind of specifics about who you guys individually are. So we can go ahead and start with you, Crystal. All right, so uh, I'm Crystal Pokemon. Um, I started my Instagram, I think right at the beginning of uh, 2020. Um, I got into Pokemon a little bit late. Um, of course, I started like everybody else did in the 90s, um, but I got back into it. I would say right at the right at the start of 2017. It's probably right when I got back into it. Um, Crystal Pokemon because I was into the Crystal set. Collecting that was kind of like my first thing. Um, getting the Crystal Lugia was my favorite card at the time. Um, and kind of just all spirals from there. Um, I've now turned more into looking into like Japanese promos. And that's kind of more what I specialize. And uh, we run a Patreon and that's what I use as my skills. And that's what I bring to the Patreon is kind of like searching the Japanese markets, like how to get deals in Japan. And um, we talk about trophy cards and kind of the analytics between like those cards, what's going on in that market, because it's completely different sometimes than like set cards and, and everything that's going on here. Um, prices are always, always changing and it's just a much different audience that are buying those cards. So I've been focusing a lot on that. And, um, I kind of like that cause I bring like a little bit of a different spin to our, to our videos where like Nick, you know, he's more of the churn and burn and he's, you know, he's got the 99 cent auctions all the time and constantly doing things. And then we have Chris over there that does the consignments all the time. And he's got like the high end, you know, set cards and he's been dealing a lot with that. But, um, that's pretty much my, my, uh, my story, a little bit of background in the summary. Awesome. 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 Uh, Nick, AKA old school Pokemon. You're up next. Yeah. So I'm, I'm Nick old school Pokemon. I, uh, Typical 90s kid, grew up with Pokemon, got out of it for a while. I actually got back in super early. Um, I got back into buying and selling Pokemon back in 2009 after I found my childhood collection, uh, sold that on eBay, and kind of got addicted to the whole buying and selling process. So 2009 to 2013-ish, I was buying and selling Pokemon cards on eBay, really never collecting the cards back then. Uh, 20, 2013, 2014, I was in college. College got to be a little bit too much for me to handle between running an eBay business, going to school and working part-time. So I gave up Pokemon. I sold everything that I had, told myself, well, I'm in college. I'm going to be working full-time now. I'm probably never going to get back into Pokemon. So I sold absolutely everything I had at that point. Mm. And then shortly thereafter, 2015, I graduated college started working uh shortly thereafter and with my with my job i was working on a cargo ship so i'd work three four months and then come home for that same three four months and during that off time i was bored didn't have anything to do during the week so i very quickly hopped right back into pokemon in 2016 that's more so when i started uh started actually collecting the cards and enjoying enjoying the hobby as a collector as well as buying and selling on ebay I recently switched over to full-time Pokemon back in November of 2020 and have been doing this full-time since then. Like uh, like Crystal mentioned, I'm definitely more so the uh, the churn and burn, the grind mindset. I do, do a lot of volume on lower-end cards. Anything from a 99-cent card up to a couple hundred bucks is usually usually my average, more so towards that, like, 99 cent to $10 card 
But uh, but yeah, definitely looking forward to tonight. Can't wait to talk to you guys. And uh, that's my intro. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, Palatine Pokemon TCG. What is going on, guys? My story is, you know, pretty similar to everyone else's. Like Nick said, 90s kid and everything. Grew up with Pokemon. Um, I was, I say I probably got out of it probably a little like right after Neo. Like I remember Neo Genesis packs. Um, I don't really remember too much after Neo Genesis, like going to go actually buy the packs and stuff like that. I just remember like really wanting a Lugia. And that was like one of my favorite cards to be able to get. So I remember trying to get those packs for that card. Um, but then we got out, like I got out of it at that time. And then I'd say probably like in 2005, 2006, like when Fire Red Leaf Green came out, I remember hearing about like a Charizard EX. And like that was the first, like EX cards were like the big thing, right? And then Charizard, of course, has always been the big thing. And then I heard about Charizard EX. I was like, you know what? Let me like get into it a little bit again and try to like see if I could get one of these Charizard cards. But um, I remember going around to all the Toys R Us's and everything like that and, you know, trying to get the Charizard EX out of the Fire Red Leaf Green packs. Never did. I ended up buying one on eBay, though, because <laughs> I couldn't pull one. Um, and back then it was like, I think it was like, the uh, 25 bucks or something like that to buy like a nice one on ebay um so it was worth it um after that time period i didn't do too much with pokemon um right before i started my instagram in about like late 2016 um i started looking at pokemon again on ebay and that's when i also heard about um like evolutions and evolutions kind of like brought me back into it as well because i was i heard about like they're reprinting pokemon cards so i was like wow that's really cool like the original pokemon cards are reprinting so i kind of like had to get some of those packs um but yeah that's when i started my instagram and i remember like the first psa card i got was a first edition psa 6 base set charizard and i remember watching it on ebay because it was on ebay auction and it was about like 550 bucks something like that like it was about to end and then i was like am i really gonna spend 550 dollars on a pokemon card so <laughs> what happened is i did so i ended up getting it and that was my first slab and i always wanted a first edition base at charizard so i'm like you know what yeah let me do it and see what happens and then after that well <laughs> i'm still doing it today um, and I, uh, you know, run my Instagram page, uh, and, you know, do Patreon with these guys here and everything like that. Um, my specialty is, uh, I do consignments on Instagram for people and, um, I love it. You know, I love helping people out and everything like that, you know, trying to get people away from having to pay the ridiculous high eBay fees and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much just a rundown of like, you know, my experience with the hobby. That's that's pretty interesting. Like you guys have all three different kind of stories. I mean, uh, I, I guess my question to like Crystal and you, Chris, is uh, uh, at, at what point did you guys decide that you guys wanted to work with each other? And then what was it about? Like, where was this kind of common ground with Pokemon with you guys? Like, where did that start? You want to go first, Brian? <laughs> um. Well, me and me and Palatown, Chris, were brothers. Yeah. So um, he kind of he. I would say he encouraged me to get into the hobby because when he was buying stuff like the first edition PSA six Charizard that he mentioned, like I thought he was crazy. I was just like, Oh really? Like, why are you buying this? Like you're wasting your money and all this stuff. And then eventually like he got more cards and he was starting to like flip a few cards and make some money. And I was just like, Oh, okay. This is interesting. And then I kind of just saw it though as like, you know, as soon as I saw the cards, like it kind of came back to, to my childhood too. It was just like, Oh wow. Like, I remember the, I think the first card I bought from him was a uh, first edition PSA 8 Lugia, Neo Genesis. And uh, that card was like, it meant a lot to me too growing up. And just like buying that and being able to have that, like I kind of got obsessed with it. I like started putting it as like my screensaver on my phone. And I was like, it was, it was to the point where like, I was just like, oh, I'm really getting into this again. And then it just kind of spiraled from there. I started, um, I, at first I just started buying. Um, I didn't do any selling. I would say I didn't do any selling till 
I would say probably like mid 2020s when I first started selling. And that's when we like created a little bit of a business together where we would buy certain cards, hold them for a little bit and then sell them, grade them, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. But I would say like I started building my collection from like 2017 to 2020, just purely buying and, and holding. And, you know, all the income just came from my job. And uh, it, it was interesting, though, seeing him get a lot of the cards that I, I know all the crazy stories because I experienced them firsthand with him. And just uh, it was a cool experience seeing everything. Yeah, like we went, you know, we were going to Toys R Us together and trying to get the Charizard EX and everything. And also my um, my cousin, too, he was into it and everything like that. He's he's a, he's a little bit into it now and everything. He has some stuff, but doesn't have like a Pokemon Instagram or anything. But like, you know, we all went with him too and everything and tried to go around to the different stores, buying the different cards and stuff. Um, but, you know, it's been a fun ride and uh, I was able to get uh, Crystal some good cards and stuff like that too. And <laughs> so it's been fun. Yeah, I got some good investments from Chris over the years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish I didn't sell. <laughs> that's 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 pretty cool to hear uh nick i want to ask i mean this is a question that i want to ask all you guys um because like for you guys where you guys have been involved with with pokemon for so long you have to have like some level of uh foresight to to get into this space so early early on so nick even though that you stopped um you know and then you got back in and what was it 2016 yeah yep yeah, what what was it? I mean, I know everyone kind of got in around that time. Uh, a lot of the OGs, like yourselves, uh, Pokey Jew, Crystal. All, I mean, all you guys. Um, you guys got you guys got in so early. Um, what was the foresight? Um, like what what was it specifically that said like, hey, there's something here for for you to actually do something here. What what was it that actually? Um, what was it? What what was that sign for you guys? I would say, so I was selling a little bit back in, back in high school and college, like I said in the intro, and, mm. uh, it, it was making me an extra couple hundred bucks, um, a week, which was, which was really nice back then. Yeah. And then when I kind of got back into it more seriously as a collector and a seller, um, the, the biggest thing for me was that it was, it was just a, a huge passion of mine, something that I thoroughly enjoyed doing. And at, at that time, the market was completely different than it is today. So it, it really wasn't something that I considered to be like an investable investment or anything like that. For me, it was just more or less just a passion of mine, something that I really, truly enjoyed doing and something that I had a lot of fun doing. So that's what kind of propelled me to keep going with the eBay business. And then in terms of collecting as, as a collector... Um, it was, again, it was more so just something that I enjoyed doing. I was getting all of these cards in. Uh, I enjoyed looking through different collections. So at one point I just, just, uh, told myself, um, I'm going to start keeping one of each card that I, that I get in, um, and try to start building my, building my own collection. But I actually started with, started with set cards, building all the, all the Watsy sets from different collections that I got in, uh, any card that I didn't have, I'd add it into my binder. And that just got really addicting to the point where I started diving more and more into it and started branching out and collecting different things. Um, booster packs, theme deck display cases, no damage nine tails, obviously. But uh, in, in the beginning, it was it was like I said, it was just something that I was passionate about, really enjoyed doing and really didn't have any aspirations or hopes to go full time or make it something that was could be considered an investment for for the future yeah so like you you said you went full-time in 2020 what was it about 2020 i mean obviously that was a huge boom in pokemon what was it that finally what, what, what was that moment there that you saw where it's like hey i want to i i i, I love what i do i love what i'm doing but i want to make this a full-time gig so like what was it about that that time? Because at that time, everything was very volatile. So I, I just kind of wanted to know um, that specific part about that. Because like going full time in a time where everything is going haywire is kind of scary. So I just wanted to know what 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 was that that one sign for you? Yeah. So I had I I had been thinking about going full time. Uh, I started giving it some serious thought. 
back in January of 2019. So by then, my eBay business was to a point where I could start to consider um, working uh, with my shipping job, saving up a lot of money, and potentially going full time within a year or so. So for me, the timing just timing just worked out perfectly. Um, Pokemon market absolutely exploded um, with covid and everything going on in the world my shipping job became a lot more stressful and a lot less fun mm. normally you're able to go to all these different countries get off the ship walk around explore all these different cultures and it's, and it's a really good time but with everything that was going on in the world at that time you were stuck on the ship um crew changes weren't happening when you were in international ports so I was I was stuck on the ship. I no normally worked three four months. I was stuck on the ship for six months, which was absolutely miserable. So I was I was just so fed up with with that job um, that I just decided Pokemon's doing really good right now. Let me give it a shot, see what happens. And uh, fortunately, it's worked out well for me thus far. Hopefully, hopefully it continues like that. But um, yeah, that's that's basically basically it. I was I was just fed up with my with my actual job and decided now was the time to give this a shot while I'm young. Don't really have a family to rely or that relies on my income. So I figured figured now was probably the best time to mm. to give it a shot and see if it was something that could work out. Makes sense. Are are you two are you uh other two are you guys also full-time Pokemon as well? Yeah. I, um I'm not well, full-time Pokemon. Um I do run my own business, but it's completely separate. I would say I'm about 25% Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, and I also work with him uh, on something else as well. Um, but my my main thing is, uh, you know, doing the Pokemon. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So um, you guys have been involved with sales from almost the very jump when it comes to Pokemon. What was it, what was it about the content side that got you guys involved? Because, you know, for the longest time, you guys weren't making content to begin with. What was it? uh that that made you say like hey i want to make content in conjunction with your business well i say it's more that you just want to meet people you know you just want to be you want to develop those um those friendships within the hobby mm -hmm. like you don't want to you don't want to just be you know stuck behind your phone the whole time and everything like that like you want to have you know when you can like you know, be more interactive with people. And one thing that I really enjoy doing is if anyone has the opportunity opportunity to, to go to in-person events, you know, like we've all met at in-person events and that was, it's so much fun. Like when you get to put, you know, a face to the name and everything and actually have like a live interaction with everyone else in the hobby, you know, cause there's so much that you guys haven't, even though you didn't meet anyone, like maybe you haven't met anyone in the hobby, like personally, but like when you do meet them in person, like there's so much to talk about. There's so much that you have in common. You know, you all love the same thing. And like, you know, it feels like you've just known each other like your whole life sometimes, you know? Mm. And um, it's it's a lot of fun. And that's, uh, that was, I'd say, you know, the main point for me to try to make more content and everything like that and try to like, you know, get out there and be more social and interactive too is just, wanting to develop more friendships within the community um and just have that interaction with people was that the same yeah. thing for you uh nick no for it's it's He's definitely like, nah, turned i'm all that. about the money yeah. <laughs> He's the <new> guy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't i don't actually care about any of you i just care about that ad revenue um no um for me it was uh I started my YouTube channel a few months after James, ZNG Emporium, mm. and we we had talked back and forth on E4 a whole bunch about getting started with YouTube, and uh, he started his YouTube channel and was basically messaging me saying how, how much fun he was having with his YouTube channel, mm. and around that same time, I had gotten started about thinking about making a YouTube channel, and I actually purchased a really cool collection. Um the probably the most expensive collection I had purchased to date at, at that time. So I created my YouTube channel to kind of show off these different collections that I, that I had purchased over the years. If mm -hmm. nothing else, so that I could go back to those videos 
and and look through that different stuff. And then it quickly turned into something where, like what Chris was saying, you're able to interact with a whole bunch of different people and meet all kinds of different people, which is really nice. And then plus, it def- definitely does help with the business, kind of getting your getting your name out there, expanding your brand, and and all of that stuff. But uh, definitely glad I did start a YouTube channel and started on started on Instagram, even though not really too too active on Instagram, but it's it's fun. Yeah, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, I remember watching you. I remember watching uh, Zach, uh, uh, Gemmit Pokemon. I remember watching, you know, the other content creators, Leon Hart, Nate, Super Duper Danny, Jordan Fringe, and all those guys. And you know, uh, I I learned a lot from from people like yourself. Um, because you guys were that resource uh, uh, available because again like content is free for people to watch and see and so like seeing seeing what you guys currently do right now seeing what you guys do on instagram seeing what you guys do on on uh pretty much almost every platform you know that you guys are on you guys are there as a wealth of information for people and so it's, it's cool to see that kind of progression from like then to what it is now and see how crazy the landscape has definitely changed even in the past two three years um, you know, it went from, it went from just solely strict YouTube channels where people were only talking about opening up packs. And, uh, then you have the other kind of content where people were just doing grading, graded returns and showing off different collections. And so, um, now, now it's just vastly different where people like yourselves are giving advice when it comes to trophy cards and, and investment advice and stuff like that. Like you guys do consulting too, I assume. And so, um, with everything said, it's, it, 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 you guys are a true testament as to, uh, what is success in the Pokemon community. And so this is where we get into the main topic, how to have a successful business in Pokemon and how to ha- how to invest in Pokemon. Um, when you guys are, you know, uh, I, you know, I know, I know Nick is a turn and burn, but are you now looking at things more of an investment now? Oh yeah, definitely. I I know I am for sure. I uh I consider my collection my my retirement plan, at least at least a portion of my retirement plan. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think it's almost hard not to not to look at some of these these collection purchases as as an investment with how with how expensive um they're they're becoming nowadays. Yeah. What about what about yourselves? I I, I know I know you went from uh Chris. I mean uh uh, uh Crystal. Uh, Brandon, I know that for you, um, you went from, you know, collecting crystal Pokemon to, to these, these huge, huge cards. And I know on Instagram, you, you keep an eye and tabs on, uh, trophy cards a lot. What was it? What was that transition for you? And are you keeping a hold of these cards purely as an investment? And then, uh, I mean, uh, as an asset for yourself, so like, that's something that I wanted to know because I think mm. you and I are the same age. Uh, you're, you're, you're 27, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you and I are the same age. So like you, you've, you've, you know, you've gone so far ahead when it comes to collecting and investing and the whole business side of Pokemon that I, I, I look at what you do as, as an inspiration. So like, tell us a little bit about that. And then you investing in as far as that goes, like what, what's, what's, what's that success level that, that you've gotten to, to where, um, you know, you're able to, to inform people and give people advice when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. So, I see, uh, I know we got Dan, got to catch him all in the chat. He's probably fainting right now about our investment advice, and <laughs> especially with uh, Nick's comment over there on his retirement. Investing advice, yeah. So uh, we got Dan probably uh, throwing 401ks in the chat. So, um, I mean, as far as, as far as it goes for me, um, it's not so much of an investment for me. Okay. Um, but it is, it is to the point where, like, obviously I don't want to buy something and it go down in value. That's true right. Too. So when I do purchase something, I make sure that I'm purchasing a good deal or what I feel is a good deal to the best of my judgment. And like, uh, I'll usually try to purchase something raw and I'll try to grade it. And, and usually you wind up working out better that way. When you can grade your own cards, it usually gets more value that way. Um, but my, like my main objective is to try to buy, you know, something as low as I can, you know, when I, if I see value um, and, and that's kind of, that's kind of how I've been seeing it. And if it goes up in value, like I'm extremely happy about that, just like anybody else. Um, but it's just kind of like, I'm not really buying it to, for it to go up in value. I'm kind of buying it as something like an asset that I enjoy, that I like. 
and then uh, it's just like if it goes up in value and like at that time i'm i'm ready to let go of it and like there's other things in my life that i want to put the money towards then that's fantastic you know it's a win-win i can sell it i can make more money off of it and use that money in different ways to fund different things um but i do i do still have some cards you know and that's kind of that's what i what it is for me for like the trophy cards like it, it would be hard for me to let go of them at least that's where i am right now um, but with some of my older cards, when I was just into English cards, you know, I, I have, you know, Shadowless Charizard, the Shadowless Blastoise Venusaur, um, you know, like we said, the Crystal Oak cards, I have a bunch of base set stuff, you know, Fossil Jungle, I, I have a lot of those hollows and, and mainly nines, you know, I have a full Gold Star set, stuff like that. So stuff like that, you know, it, again, like I'm not as attached to all of it, you know, and if the price is right, um, I will consider selling them and like kind of just funding other things with them. But mm -hmm. that's kind of what I use the money for. Maybe I'll, I'll sell it and I'll be like, okay, I want to sell this because I want to put it to this card that I, that I'm really looking forward to purchasing. And that's kind of what I've been doing with myself. It's kind of, it's not really like I'm selling it and like getting any kind of wealth off of it. It's more, more of the sense of like, I'm selling stuff that I used to enjoy more. And now I'm using that money to get stuff that I'm enjoying at the moment and, and that I prefer to have in my collection. So in, in a sense, I'm trading it with money because it's it's very hard to like get an, an arrangement with trade these days and being able to switch things out for people. Not everyone wants, you know, to trade for what you have. But yeah. um, that's kind of like that's what I've been doing in the hobby. And that's kind of my objective. And that's how I've acquired a lot of the cards I have is like we said in 2017, you know, I was I was purchasing cards is buying from Chris and. You know, I did sell off some of those cards that I had, you know, at, at wins, at games. And then what I did was I took that money and I purchased, you know, more cards that I wanted to buy. Maybe like maybe I sold 10 cards and put all that money into one card, you know, kind of downsizing a little bit into yeah. more expensive cards that I that I prefer and I enjoy more. That's that's sort of what I did. Um, And, and in a way, I kind of I kind of view that as as a strict hobby for myself. I mean, I say it's an investment, but I, I don't know how long or, or even if this isn't a, a viable investment. I don't even think it is an investment. By the way, guys, this is not investment advice. Um, this is this is purely just us talking and having fun. And, you know, that's just how we see it. But anyways, um, you know, for me, like I've always every card that I have bought up to this point, like from buying a, a few binder collections here and there and then selling it, it's always gone back to things in the hobby. I don't think I've ever taken like money out and for profit like what i mean by profit is like for other things like clothes or you know a car or something like i haven't done that um i i just like being able to to take my money and then see the gains on it and then maybe get something else that's really cool too like i'll, I'll see something else and it's like oh wow that's really cool or like i've never had this in my collection before i've never had this in my possession before i'd love to have it or it'd be purely uh uh done in the sense of content right like i'll sell something off because i find something that's very very obscure on, on ebay and you know after doing a lot of research i was like wow this is actually very difficult to source out so i'll buy that and then just showcase that as a piece of content um because honestly i don't think i don't think my my uh collection itself is generating me any income it's just kind of sitting here and collecting dust if we're all if, if, I'm, if i'm being honest but um yeah, I just I just wanted to know what uh, uh, Chris's thoughts were. So like, I know you do a lot of um, you do a lot of consignments. Uh, you're kind of the exact opposite of what Nick does. Nick is like a turn and burn, and he holds a lot of inventory uh, versus yourself. Why is that the case? Yeah, um, I am the complete opposite of Nick when it comes to uh, <laughs> selling things um i've i myself personally have uh never once done a ebay auction for myself um i've never sold a card wow. at an auction that's just not that's just not how i you know prefer to do things i if i were to ever have sold a card on ebay it would be buy it now with the or best offer option but most of the times like if i'm going to sell anything like that it's going to be on my instagram page whether it's for others or it's for myself um what i do with my personal items is for me like i'm not gonna lie like it's hard for me to sell like things that i have like i get attached to too many things <laughs> so um i think that also plays into 
why I don't do auctions because auctions is just kind of like you're ready to let it go for whatever you want it to, whatever it goes for, right? So with me, like, I already don't really want to let it go, <laughs> but um, I'm going to just hold it until I, you know, feel like I get an offer that's right around a little bit above market value at the time or something like that. Like, I'm going to wait for a strong offer or just wait for the item to go up if that happens. Like, I don't, mm. I don't have a problem, like, if I, you know, if I if I don't sell it at the you know right time or anything like that. I mean, there's some things that like, I wish that I did sell at the peak and everything like that, which oh, I'm man. sure every, everyone does, you know, it's human nature to wish that you sold something like at, you know, at peak all the time, but um, I didn't. And you know what? Like a lot of that stuff has gone down a considerable amount as everyone yeah. knows, but you know, there's, there's some things that like, I just, you know, I, I'm just happy keeping and I'll keep it until maybe it reaches a point again where I'm comfortable with selling it. You know, it's it's not something that like I feel like I have to, you know, sell a certain amount of my own product each month and everything like that. Um, you know, sometimes maybe you have doubles or extras or something like that. And maybe you do want to let it go for market value or a little under market value. Like Brendan was saying, like, if you're trying to fund something else, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it always is like, uh, you know, I'll sell like if I know where to put the money, like if I have a purpose for where I'm going to put that money. Um, you know, a good example, too, of a card that um, I have that I never sold was a... Uh, is a PSA 10 Shadowless Charizard. I graded it myself. Um, I got it probably in about, I think it was like uh, late 2017, early 2018, somewhere around that time. Um, I literally got it on eBay for like, it was $200. So it was, a, it was a buy it now of $200 and the pictures were like horrendous. But like, I just, I just saw it and I was just like, you know what, for 200 bucks, like, I can't go wrong with it. So I, I didn't know if it was going to be real or anything like that. It, it's just that the pictures were so bad. Um, and I got it and it was, I couldn't believe it when I opened it because it was literally perfect. Like I was looking for like a dent something because you know, you, every time you order a card, like you put under the light at a certain angle, oh, well, there's a dent, you know, like it's something like that always happens. But this one, like I couldn't believe it. there was nothing. And when I graded that card, you know, it got the 10. And um, at that time, the 10 was worth about, I think uh, I was thinking it was like around 20,000, a little bit under 20,000 at that time. And now, you know, it's um, you remember, probably- you remember, what happened? you remember what happened when you graded that? You got, somebody called you and wanted to make an offer. And then do you remember what the offer was that you turned down? I don't. <laughs> what was it? I don't remember I think, that. I think uh, Charlie Herlocker, I believe, had called you, and he had somebody that was interested in purchasing it. Oh, you yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Right? Yeah, I graded through Ludkins, and at that time, Charlie was, you know, the guy at Ludkins. Um, and uh, he said that someone had, like, I think it was, like, a 25K offer or something like that for it. And I, yeah, you know, I... I, I remember I, I it was 30. Yeah, or, or 30, somewhere around there. But I turned it down, and, you know, to this day... It's probably probably anywhere from like you know don't quote me but like eighty to a hundred thousand dollar yeah. card somewhere around that area. Um, I mean some have sold for more, some have sold for less, mm -hmm. but um, and I, I still have it because it's you know it's special to me. Yeah, you graded you it. You know, it's something. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that means a lot, and that's not to say, you know, in my lifetime that I'm not going to sell it. Like you know, if I have to sell it for whatever reason, family matters or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, know, of course. There's, there's priorities, you know, Yeah. but, um, you know, there's just some stuff that you feel more of a special attachment to and everything. And I don't know if I'm still talking about the same topic or no, you're, <laughs> you're you are, you are. going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but, that's, um, that's pretty cool to hear. Cause, uh, uh, you know, I, I tell people like, I think all, all the cards that I currently have, which is not a lot, I have a very, very small card collection myself. Um, I say it's all fair game, but like some of the stuff behind me isn't fair game. So like I've had, I've had Ninja, uh, Ninja's wife, Ble Jessica Blevins offer $20,000 for my Pokemon snap machine. And I turned that down 
Cause like there's just a story behind it, you know. I had to drive yeah. up to Ohio for six and six and a half hours, and then six and a half hours back that same day, um, just to go back to work the next day. It, it, it was one of those things where it's like I I remember I remember buying it, I remember getting it. Um, there's just things that I just won't ever sell. Um, granted, like you just like you said before, like there's nothing uh, like there's things in life that that would take precedent uh, over all this stuff, like having family. Uh, if I ever have kids or co- they want to have college or something like that, there's, there's just more important things than, than materialistic objects, obviously. Um, I just want to, I want to bring out something that, uh, Lucario forever said in the chat. He said, always best selling when you don't have to sell. And that's, that's yes. 100% correct. That's, that's a very good point. I definitely agree with that. I agree with that too. Um, so where you guys have been involved in the hobby so long? I can definitely say you guys are successful at what you guys do. Um, but I want to talk about some of the mistakes you guys have done, like things that, that stand out where, where you learn from it and you don't plan on ever repeating that same mistake ever again. So, uh, I'm going to let Nick go ahead and take this one. One thing I can think of off the top of my head is we'll, uh, we'll continue on with the, uh, PSA 10 shadowless Charizards. Um, so, like I said, when I first got back into buying and selling in 20, 2009, um, I had no interest whatsoever in collecting the cards. It was strictly business for me. And so, at that point, uh, 2010, 2011, I had the opportunity to purchase a PSA 10 Shadowless Base Set Charizard off of Ed E. Birdman for Ooh. $400. Shout out to e. And so I... I bought that card from him and I held on to it for a little while, a year or two, and then prices moved up to $900. I saw that I had the opportunity to double my money. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. So I sold that card and uh, regret that to this day. So that that's that's my biggest uh, biggest regret is not, not having a true interest in the hobby from a collector standpoint. Hmm. Uh, because had I been interested in the hobby from a collector standpoint, I would have kind of known like the true value of that card, how rare that card actually is. Something something outside of like the, the monetary aspect of the card. And I think that's something that's really, really important in order to be successful is you have to have you have to have a true passion behind what you're whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. It's a double edged sword, I think. It is. It is because yeah. you you get so sentimental with the things that you have, it, or or like the people that you work with, or or just it, 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 there's just so much uh, uh so much goodness in this hobby where it's like, dang, I could I can make a lot of money, but do I want to make a lot of money? Or uh, th- <laughs> there there's just so much to it. Like, um, I, I I was gonna say something, but I forgot. But uh, what what about you, Brandon? Like, what what's something that you what's a mistake that you've learned from? Um, throughout the time from here that people that you think that people would definitely value well i've made a lot of mistakes and a lot of it's um you know not buying something right away or like having cold feet or just being you know a little just scared to pull the trigger and just being like okay well maybe it's just too expensive right now you know i'm sure we all have had that yeah um but i think i have one of the biggest ones <laughs> so um back in 2020 there was an illustrator that popped up on uh, Macari. Uh, it was a raw illustrator. It was $88,000. Um, it looked really clean. You know, I called Chris up. I'm like, we need to, you know, we need to buy this right away. We need to contact the middleman. We need to get on a plane, like just get us tickets. Like we need to go right now. <laughs> like we need to find some way to go and secure this card. Like it was insane because at, at that time, at that time, that was a little bit after the nine went for like two twenty five, like in the, on the Japanese market. And Scott and everyone on E four was like, "Oh, it's a five hundred thousand dollar card." And then I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, "Okay, well, why isn't anyone picking up for two twenty five and doubling their money?" You know, it just took time, but eventually somebody did pick up that card. But that was like the only data point we had at the time, like two twenty five. Everybody else was saying it's it's half a million. So I'm like, okay, well, eighty-eight thousand dollars—that's an extremely good deal on an illustrator in 2020. Like, that's that's insane. And it came with the original mailing envelope and the coupons and everything that came with the card, you know, sent to the original winner. And the seller was the original winner. So, 
I, I tried to do everything as quick as I could, but you know, within the hour it was snapped up from Japan and it snapped up off the market. And like, it's with that type of stuff, like you need super quick connections. Like you need to be able to like wire the money to your middleman in Japan right away. The middleman was trying, like my middleman was trying to set up arrangements to meet the person, you know, but this person must have been bombarded with requests. Mm -hmm. And like, that's kind of, it's like first come first serve. Like you really have to have somebody that's quick on that ground floor. And, and at that, like, it was just, it was just chance at that time, you know, but I mean, that was like, what's that card worth today? We saw a nine. What would the nine do? $1 million. Or how, well, I don't remember what the, was, what the sale point. It, it was uh, it was one point two something with Pokey Mafa to Logan Paul, and then Logan Paul took that and um, tri gave what was it, four million dollars for for yeah. the ten. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what what did I? You know, if it was a nine, it was raw. You know, if it graded a nine, it looked clean from the pictures. But if it graded a nine, you know, so what, you, what did you I don't look? know what it graded as. Um, it, it has not been graded. I know that I actually know who, who bought it. I found out later on who bought it. it. It is actually a Japanese citizen. Um, and they have a Twitter account and they posted about it and it's still raw. That so like, is at crazy. Least, at least it went to somebody that's enjoying the card and like, didn't just like buy it to flip it and everything like that. So it, it went to a true collector, you know, someone that's going to cherish the card, but I know that I've seen like just on his Twitter, like I've seen people that like, I know, cause I recognize the, the usernames and they're like, I'll give you $600,000. I'll give you $700,000, you know, comment. he's like, no, sorry, it's not for sale, but it, that, it's just, it's a, that it's is a crazy true diamond hands. That is true. That, that is a, true, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I always talk about like, what is a, the true, like an actual definition of a true collector? That to me just says that's a true collector. You get that person's getting thrown like life changing money, like potential, like multi generational type of money, depending on how well you invest it. Like that is crazy. That that is a cool story. If my editor sees this, I want him to clip that up. That was sick. Th thank you for that. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, everyone's gonna start asking you now what's the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, uh, dang that. The big 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 f in the chat because that that is a big regret yeah um, pretty big. <laughs> no but like I, I think i think that's something that you also learn from too though the reason why like i asked that is because a lot of successful people learn from their biggest mistakes right like for me um i i came into this hobby a lot later than you guys i came in here it literally three years ago three years and four days ago um and so for me, it was uh, uh, this thing where I came in, I saw something, I, I, I had, you know, some people were giving me uh, one of their binders because they saw that I was getting back into this hobby. And, you know, I flipped that. And um, one of the biggest mistakes was I wish, I wish I was spending as much money as I am on cards right now that I was in 2019 because I would be crushing it. Um, not and, and, you know, I, I guys – audience uh chat i i'm nowhere near any of these guys in comparison in terms of what they have um i'm, I'm just saying out of my own personal experience I, I i'd be crushing it in my own personal manner um my biggest regret uh i told th this is this is regret that you know the chat already knows because uh we had pokemon radar on here but uh it was back in 2020 i had just got two plasma storm booster boxes for f half the market value at that time and um, I sold one for $2,100, which was about $500 above market value. And um, the, I had two choices between uh, my factory sealed shiny Charizard combat figure and um, uh, a, a 2001 Master Trainer board set. But what's cool is that it had, uh, it being factory sealed, it had four base set unlimited packs on each, on, on the actual cover. So it's sealed with the box. And that's really cool because it's a 1999 product with a 2001 product. And I have not seen any on the market since. Uh, the only two people that I know that have it is Cool Trainer Ryan and Radar. So I didn't find out till eight months later that he scooped it off. And it, it literally sold, uh, you know, no more than a week later. And at that time, I was like, I'm not going to click watch because I don't want anyone to know that I'm watching this. Um, like very, very niche stuff was where, you know, uh, not many people were really paying attention to. But at the same time, you know, it, all it takes is just one person. And so my biggest regret is not hopping onto an opportunity uh, right away when I when I had enough money to buy both at the time. Um, mm -hmm. But. You know, I just, I want to ask the opposite of this question now. What's 
what's led to your successes? So like, I'm going to go ahead and put this question over towards uh, Chris. Like what is the reason why you stay uh, uh, successful to this day? Like what are the, what are the things that you constantly do or constantly say to yourself that, that essentially uh, leads to this level of, of uh, I wouldn't say maintenance, but it, it leads to this level of where you're still maintaining this level of success or, in the green or whatever you call it what 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 is it that you do i'd have to boil it down to passion and honesty so without those you're honestly not going to get anywhere um you have to have passion to be able to do this you you really do like you have to have passion you have to be um you know you have to be sociable um because at the end of the day it's like everyone thinks, you know, oh, like, oh, sometimes if you do this full time, right? Like, oh, you don't have to go to work. You don't have to answer to anyone else or anything like that. But no, you're working more when you're working for yourself than when you are like a nine to five. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like the clock doesn't shut off. And it's it's difficult sometimes, but you have to, you know, you have to, you, at the same time, you have to set your limits and everything too. But without passion, you're never going to be able to do that. You're never going to be able to get over that hurdle that like, oh, if someone messages you at 12 a.m. and you're still up, well, you should respond, you know, like try to, you know, try to see what's going on. You know, it's without passion, you're just you, you wouldn't be able to do that. And the second thing, too, is like I said, honesty, you know, your your reputation goes a long way and it's very important to be honest in everything you do within you know not just the community within your whole life but um you know people will see the little things you do here and there and you know the relationships you build with people whether it's um you know through pokemon or or whatever else you're doing but you know put honesty first and um passion as well and you know as long as you're doing those things and you have a passion um figure out what it is you want to do. I mean, like you can do, you know, there's a great opportunity to also like, if you don't have the money for certain cards, you could also trade up for other cards. You know, like you could, you could do a lot of trades within this hobby. There's plenty of ways to do trades. And like, you know, I, I, if you ever wanted to trade with someone, I would always suggest using a middleman. Like for instance, what I do is if, uh, you know, two people want to do a trade, they would both send me, both of the parties would send me the items. I verify everything's good. And then I exchange it. You never want to go ahead. Like, honestly, like really, no matter who it is, um, unless if you really know them and everything like that, you never want to just say, okay, send out at the same time, you know, because I, I've done that before. And it, and back when I first started and I was scammed, um, luckily though, I was protected because what I did is when I did the trade with that person, I also traded <clears throat> money through PayPal. So I did a trade value with money through PayPal. Mm. So if they didn't give me the items, like I could still open up a case and get my value back. Mm. So that's that's how I, and that was actually Crystal's idea, um, which he suggested I do. And that saved me thousands of dollars because of his suggestion on that. Um, but ever since, you know, ever since then, you know, you've all, you also learned that you just have to be really careful out there um, with everything you do because you don't know who's on the other side. Um, but, you know, just watch yourself, be careful, you know, have a passion, you know, act honestly with others. And I think you, you think, I think you'll have a good time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I tell people um, that there's, there's more money to be made by being honest uh, because there's a level mm -hmm. of longevity in that, right? Like so many people are in it for a quick buck. And they don't really realize that, hey, if I'm just being honest, you can make way more money, like a stupid amount of money. Um, because the moment you scam someone, you know, out of whatever amount, whether it's $5 to $100 or even $10,000, that's it. You know, that money's gone. You know, once it's spent, it's gone. There, there's no more. Like, you can't revisit that same bridge or that same avenue again. Um, you know, lot, lots of good advice there. Um, for f one, one thing that I've kind of learned from people like old school and, um, Zach, and this is something that you can kind of touch on, uh, Nick is discipline. That's one, one thing that I've kind of learned 
uh, d dis having a level of discipline, um, keeps, keeps a level of steady. It, it allows me to have this steady mentality when it comes to approaching certain business or financial based decisions, um, uh, in this space. So I, I wanted to talk to you, Nick, about the level of discipline and where does that come from? And, um, what kind of advice you can give to people to, to essentially, uh, develop that level of discipline that you have because that's something that you you have to have that like i've noticed that level of discipline whether it's sales um whether it's it, it's how you do things at events it's like you're very very calm you're very focused so uh whatever whatever you say is probably going to help anyone in, in this chat even myself yeah nick is, uh, a, definitely. Nick is a one man sweat <laughs> nick is a one man sweat shop he is dude i don't know how he does he's it got, he's got Paper cuts all over his fingers and hands. Dude, from the I, label I don't know how he shipping. does it. I don't know how he does it. People like that this blow guy, my mind. He's got a lot of discipline. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's definitely tough sometimes for sure. Um, like yeah, no it's, doubt. It, it, it's like it's like what Chris was saying. Um, the biggest thing is you need to have a passion for it. Uh, my biggest passion right now is becoming successful with my eBay business. So. There's definitely days where I want to just forget about it and not have to worry about it. But in the end, that's just going to hurt me, hurt my business. So that's that's my driving force is my number one goal in life right now is to have a su successful eBay business. And in order to do that, you got to wake up every day and package those orders, answer those emails, so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's a lot tougher than what people think. And another thing with, with, with that outside of, uh, outside of the discipline, just, just working and, uh, having, having that grind set is being customer oriented and communicating professionally with everyone that you interact with. There are a lot of buyers on eBay or just people on eBay in general who, really infuriate you but you you really never know who's who's behind that that uh that user account and mm -hmm. so if you kind of push them aside and respond to them nastily or whatever uh you've obviously lost a customer you never know what type of uh what type of customer that person could become going forward mm -hmm. so i always approach everything uh handle everything professionally no matter no matter what type of what type of situation it actually is yeah, so like on days where it is difficult, because like I know for all of us, we have, um, you know, there's definitely days where it's like you're not you're not in the mood, right? Like there are definitely days where you feel um, burnt out or out of out of shape with something. What what do you do to quickly get yourself back on the horse? Like what are you doing to uh, essentially say like you know what like this is this is is, is it the drive that's uh, allowing you to get back on almost immediately? Is it the fact that you're so hungry to have? a very successful eBay, uh, 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 store that, that you, you get back on that horse immediately because you refocus and, um, you're able to get back on that horse to do that. Is that what it is? That's, that's a big part of it. Um, that's for the most part, I'm able to kind of get through everything, just focusing on my goal that I have. But obviously there are times where I'm just fed up with something. Um, Negative feedbacks are a big one on my account. Anytime mm. I get negative feedbacks, it like destroys my day. Um, yeah. So time times like that, it is important to take a break and kind of forget about things. So for me personally, I love biking. Uh, so I'll take a break, go outside, go for a bike ride or whatever. And that's that's another thing that that's actually really important is to just be goal oriented, but. Don't make that like your your sole focus. You do have mm. to you do have to take time for family, friends, yourself, whatever. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, my, mine's mine's just going to the gym or taking a nap because I don't really get too much sleep. When when uh, Chris said that you don't get that much sleep, yeah, that's true. I I, I probably put about like a hundred hours into social media a week because uh, my phone my phone tells me I know exactly how I'm spending my time on my phone, <laughs> and um yeah you know like. Whether it's it's literally me playing Fortnite with Don Diego, her brother, and Radar, or um, you know me just going to the gym or me taking a nap, those are like my ways of kind of like quickly coping and quickly getting back on that horse. Because like you might you might have like that one kind of negative comment, and then it's like I, I'm a I'm the type of reactive person because like 
you know, I was bullied growing up. So like I got to the point where it's like, I'm not going to take that anymore. So then once you get on social media, you have to act the exact opposite. If someone's saying something nasty, you can't interact with that. You can't be reactive. Otherwise it catches like wildfire. And so, mm. um, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, man, if I get something negative, then, you know, you have multiple people piling onto it at the same time. So it's like, dang, I gotta, I gotta back off this for a hot minute or, uh, uh, you know, my day is going to be ruined. So, um, yeah, no, I, I, I get the whole biking thing. Um, Brandon, what, what, what's something that you do to kind of, um, you know, if, if you've, if you're not feeling it that day or, you know, you're not, you're not doing something, um, in terms of Pokemon where it's kind of got you in a bad mood, what are you doing to get back? What, what are you doing to refocus? Well, I wanted to say first, I mean, your grind is obviously extremely impressive when you say that you don't even say you sleep, you say you nap. So that's how you know you're working like crazy No, I sleep, there. I sleep, I sleep. Don't get me wrong, I sleep, but it, it's like, the, you know, I don't get too many naps. So like I take time, like outside of my sleep, you know, I, I, I get like maybe four or five hours of sleep a day. And, you know, after that, then it's like my nap that I get once a week. That's like my time, you know, I, I don't... I, I do my normal, you know, social media uh, obligations or priorities and then get that done and then take a nap. I don't respond to anyone until I wake up. Yeah. No, then it's yeah. back to normal. That sounds rough, but you're grinding out there. Ah. <laughs> um, I, for, for me, um, what's important for me is like having a schedule. You know, um, when you work for yourself, like it's all about like staying on schedule. You know, wake, wake up at a certain time and and, you know, Usually you follow along by like eating at a certain time, like you emails at a certain time, you kind of just, you grow into a schedule, you know, you're not working your, a nine to five, but it's almost like you form your own nine to five because you have things and tasks that you have to do every day. And as long as you're in a routine of doing it all the time, like it, that's how I get the most done and I stay productive. Um, even when like, you know, negative things happen and I, and I feel like, oh, like, you know, there's too much like talking and commotion on in the space and stuff like that you know it is nice to step back a little bit and join other things and reflect on other things in your life um but that again it, like you always whenever you come back to it, like that's how you know like you really love it and it's like a passion of yours and like yeah. you you continue to consume this you know the, the content and the knowledge and everybody's videos and stuff like that and like that's one thing that i'm always doing you know i'm always watching everybody's podcasts you know i'm watching dan's videos jake's videos nick's videos Scott's videos, everybody's videos all the time that like I'm constantly listen, listening to as I'm packing orders, as I'm doing, you know, my day to day schedule, daily tasks and stuff like that. And like always having that kind of knowledge and like people like telling you things it, it helps motivate you as well in your business endeavors to like keep going and keep, you know, like, oh, well, like that's a good idea. You know, I didn't think about it that way. And like maybe I should implement that into my business or maybe I should, you know, start doing this and like advertise here or certain things that, you know, keep the ball rolling and it keeps things fresh. And then that's how you, you get ideas and you kind of feed off of everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like, it's, it's like, I have, I have goals. And so like, for me, like, it, like my routine might like look really, really rough to someone else, but I, I love what I do. So like, if it means being able to take a break for a few hours and then coming back and, uh, you know, making some content or thinking about ways to, to go about my day, um, producing content or, or doing some, some sort of sale or something like there's always different things that I do within this hobby. It's never just like one thing or it's never been just this one thing. So it kind of keeps, it, it keeps me, um, it keeps me kind of refreshed all the time. Uh, even though I'm not getting the full eight hours of sleep, like this beautiful, handsome guy, Nick. <laughs> no, um, I, I think so far the conversation has been really great. Like we covered, you know, mistakes, uh, uh, things not to do. Um, we, I don't really think we talked about investing. Granted, it's not like we talked about advice to anyone in, when it comes to investing to begin with. Um, but I mean, we talked about how to be successful in this space or what makes you guys successful. And I think our over, I think our audience has definitely talked about it. So I kind of want to, you know, end that kind of topic right there and move on towards your Patreon service. Um, so that way you guys can kind of plug that in. So you guys want to talk about that a little bit more. Um, I know you guys have given a teaser. I know you guys have guests from time to time, anywhere between like swole poke, low popping, stuff like that. We do have low popping coming onto the podcast very soon. We have, uh, Nito coming onto the podcast very soon. 
Um, so, uh, just talk, just talk about like what, what your Patreon service has to offer. Cause I'm sure a lot of people would definitely like to get in on it. Cause I'm the type of person that I, I love li- listening to podcasts. Like that's something that I, I enjoy doing and I enjoy listening because, um, I just don't like watching opening pieces of content. Like I, like I'm friends with a lot of people who open product on content, but I just don't really watch it myself. It's hard for me to stay engaged, but, um, yeah, like, yeah. What, what do you, uh, like, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, either one of you guys can feel free to yeah. hop in. I started off. Um, so we, we have a Patreon. We started it in September. Um, we all three run it. So we're all three in every video. Um, we have what we call as an MMT. It's a monthly market talk. Um, we do that once a month, and we just kind of go over, like, our a general rundown, you know, our sales and purchases, um, kind of like just discussion of like what's going on in the market. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we kind of just feed off of each other. We share, you know, screens. And if I'm looking at anything like that came up in the Japanese market, I'll share it. If they've had, you know, if they've seen any cool auctions go off, we'll just kind of discuss and talk about what did you guys think about that last PWCC auction? You know, did you think it was high? Like, what were your expectations? You know, we'll kind of go off of things like that, feed off of each other, go back and forth. Um, and then we have at the beginning, the first week in every month, um, we do a live, so it's a live Q and A. Um, everybody can come in and join. It's a Zoom call, and um, basically everyone can come in and join. They can turn on their camera, they can speak, and um, we have a nice little audience that goes on there. And we always have a special guest every month. So we kind of like the first hour, we give the special guests like an introduction. You know, tell us how, what got you into the hobby, like what your passions are, and things like that. And then from there we kind of open up to the audience. Did you have any questions for the guests? Did you have, you know, do you have any questions for us? And we kind of, they can inbox their questions and we kind of go through a list and we answer all the questions. We let everybody that's there, you know, give a, give their input suggestions and stuff like that. It's kind of cool because we kind of get like a back and forth going with everybody. And we get like, you get like a feeling for like what the market's like and like what, you know, somebody's completely different perspective on things. And we can kind of go back and forth and see is we might not always come to an agreement, but like, that's cool to kind of just see the different opinions in the hobby. And, you know, there's not too many places that you can do that besides in person. So to kind of create something like that was really cool. And uh, I think, I think it was, it's a fun experience. Yeah. It's a, it's something that we really enjoy because um, especially when we have the guests on, not only are we talking with them, but whoever is in our Patreon can freely talk to them as well. So it's like, you know, we're all in like, a room together and just having a conversation and asking each other questions and going back and forth and everything like that. So it, it's just like our goal is to like create like a community, which almost feels like you're at an in-person event, but you know, you could do it from the comfort of your own home and just to be able to like network and get, you know, meet different people and get different ideas from people and stuff like that. I mean, I know before um, we jumped onto this, uh, this uh live like we were all talking here and we were getting really good ideas from you know each other and some things we've never even really known about and stuff like that before so it's just yeah we wanted to create kind of like a platform for that and it's you know it's still growing it's relatively uh it's relatively new and stuff like that so it's still growing um but we're having fun with it you know we're having a good time with it i think everyone that's in it is having a good time um And again, it's not an obligation. You know, if if you did join it, you can feel free to leave at any time. You know, if you signed up for the Patreon, the um, it's ten dollars a month for uh, access to the videos and everything. Um, If you wanted to leave after the first month, you could leave. You know, it's like there's no obligation. You know, it's whatever you guys would want to do. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a way of having fun, you know, with others in the community and being able to have a good social interaction. For sure. And they, no, the, the lives are definitely, in, in my opinion, the lives are definitely the highlight of, of the Patreon. All being able to get together and it's, you have Lo Poppin, who's from the UK, uh, MS Paris, those two always join us, who's from France. So it's people, people from all over the place. And they, they, them two especially have a whole different perspective because they're, they're overseas versus we're all here in the United States. So Absolutely. It's, it's cool to get the different perspectives from everyone. And we yeah. do have um, David, Brown Eyes, Yellow Dragon, who comes in from time to time. And he, he has um, dealt with a lot of uh, high end cards. You know, he uh, 
he was one that uh kind of like middleman that um the snap magic heart mm -hmm. uh Charles so Davis. he's he's dealt with yeah <laughs> he's dealt with a lot of you know good high-end cards and everything like that so it's cool to hear his perspective on things too yeah he, um, he was so, buying some stuff oh. this weekend I, I don't i won't talk about it but yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. But i think uh it was it was a good topic too for this video um because like we just i know i don't not sure if you guys saw but um they had like jake pokenomics and like basic trainer and uh pokey knowledge um they kind of had them do like a video on like paywalls and stuff like that and and it kind of went through as like patreon like should there be patreon in the community and stuff like that and like are you getting a value and like it kind of goes to the fact of like how much are are people getting you know for that value you know are you just like hanging out and making you know funny videos and stuff like that and like it's just entertainment and, like if people want to pay for that then fine but like yeah we try to give people like resources and you know i i i'm very analytical you know i like to go down like rabbit hole and like figure out like well so we talk about trophy cards a lot right so like we'll we'll think about like releases we'll talk about that we'll like go through articles and like i've we've screen shared like the different japanese pages that i'll search for and like kind of different terms and stuff like that and like we share all of these things because you know at the end of the day like we're helping the the community grow and, and the knowledge mm -hmm. but like you also do a lot of work for that that like just giving it all of your secrets away for free basically if you want to just say something like that like it's like it's hard because all that stuff takes a lot of time and at the end of the day like time yeah. is money so yeah, it, that, it, that's that's something i kind of want to touch on real fast like um often at times like you know you know i say this i say this without a doubt um i i i say this to all my friends i say this to myself too um as as you get older you should be able to value your time more and more and more um because i feel like as you get older the more busier you get um mm. with that being said i think that you know uh there's going to be people out there that want to support your content and there's nothing wrong with that. It, you, you, no one has to pay for your Patreon. It's some, it's something that you literally just have something set up. And if someone out of their own volition wants to pay for it, cool. Like $10 a month is what? Like a, a Starbucks. Yeah. It's, it's really much. just that. <laughs> yep. it's, it, I, I mean, it's, it's something that I think that, um, I think it's something that I just don't think, uh, it really matters. I know for me, I don't really have a Patreon. I know myself and uh, my former co-host and I, we kind of talked about having a, a, a Patreon. And we were like, ah, I would much rather have views on whatever thing that I'm doing, even though that we're not getting paid out. And just to just to give you, like, if, if, if we didn't even have sponsorships, we would not have anything coming this way, right? We're not a monetized channel by any means whatsoever. And um, knowing how busy you guys are with your day-to-day, you know, maybe that one hour is probably that one time that you have set aside for content or for your Patreon or for whatever you have. It's not like me where I'm, I'm putting out so much in volume in terms of content throughout the week. So it's just, it, it comes down to putting down a value towards your time. And there's going to be people out there that value that. Um, I don't think it's really anyone's opinion to judge. Um, can someone yeah. have a, a critique about it? Absolutely. Especially if they've, you know, they've gone through the process of buying a Patreon and, you know, they might not get that value there, but, um, you know, I mean, at the same that. time, too, like you provide information, you know, that's almost like, let's just say spoon feeding, right? So you like you, you have it, you show them exactly what to do, maybe Japanese websites, what to search, where to find deals, you know, certain things like that, where like, you don't really want to give everybody like your, your upper hand, right? For free. You yeah, know, that where, too, where, it, like, it also it comes down to connections too, right? Like, um, being able to build, um, this sort of network, quote unquote, um, allows you to kind of, I wouldn't say bypass because that sounds really elitist, but like, it really says like, Hey, like, you know, I'm giving you money. I'm paying you for a quote unquote service. So this is what I'm getting out of it versus someone that's just, you know, off the wall, randomly asking for something right off the bat, right? You're going to prioritize someone who, who, uh, is in a way paying you. Cause again, it's, it's, you're, you're getting paid for your time at that point. Um, and, you know, you don't have to do it. You don't have to put out any content whatsoever, right? Um, you know, some people choose to put out their content for free. Cool. Some people don't. That's perfectly fine as well. Um, yep. I just don't think yep. there's really any room for judgment. But uh, 
I, I think, uh, you know, I've seen, I've seen, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not subscribed to your Patreon, but you know, I, I see what you guys have to offer. And I know for a fact, you guys have a low to offer. Um, n knowing, knowing all your, all three of your different backgrounds, like just sitting down and speaking with you guys at these in-person events. It's like, wow, these guys, these guys know their stuff. And I mean, if we, we, I mean, I, I told these guys before the podcast, we're gonna keep this podcast relatively light, which we have been, but like, I know my audience here who probably never dealt with you guys. If they like what you've said, then, you know, who knows? They might, they, they might see some value there. They might subscribe to a Patreon, you know? Um, it's like Twitch, right? Like people, people pay money for subscriptions on Twitch. You don't have to do anything. It's just the button that's there. Right. So, um, I think that's, that's pretty much it. As far as that goes, if, if you want to go check out their Patreon, definitely do so. There's a lot of insight. There's a lot of knowledge. I know, I know, uh, I'm I'm the type of person that's starting to learn and trying to get to learn more and more about trophy cards because I'd like to have a Pokemon Snap contest card within the next X amount of years. That's like one of my end all be all goals because I wanted to match my Pokemon Snap machine right over here. Um, that's there that's, we go. Really, that's that's the only thing I want. But um, yeah, uh, which one do you want? <sighs> I don't know, <laughs> man. I think any yeah. I think any of them would be perfectly fine. No, I. Yeah. Like even though Charizard is one of my favorite car Pokemon and Charmander looks really cool, I think the Articuno probably looks the most dope out of all of them. It, it just looks so mm -hmm. cool. Um, yeah. But uh, what was I was gonna say, no, Nick, Nick, you run a podcast with Dan, uh, Dan, catch them all uh, collectibles. He is a great guy as well. Um, talk, talk to the, our audience here a little bit about your podcast. Yeah, so me and Dan started a podcast uh, a little over a year ago now. Um, we finally, just this year, or just this past few weeks, created a separate YouTube channel for the podcast. Uh, it's called Pokey Flips. So Good created day. a separate channel of us two combined together. It's every other week. Uh, we upload the podcast every other Thursday. And going forward in year two we're going to be doing uh guests every other episode so one episode's just going to be me and dan talking about different pokemon topics we'll answer any questions from the previous episode that you guys leave in the comment section and then the following episode will have a special guest come on and kind of talk about their specialty within pokemon mm -hmm. we just recently had peter from ludkins and polaris um the middleman service and then our next guest is going to be mason from cardinal gaming so that'll be another one really fun one um mm -hmm. definitely recommend if you guys want to go check us out over on pokey flips definitely definitely that sounds pretty cool i like the name I like the name. Yeah, definitely have to yeah, give definitely. It a listen. Are you guys available it, on Spotify? Yes, we actually did just uh, just figure out uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. So there you go. Whatever whatever form of podcast you listen to your uh, your podcasts on, we 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 got it got you covered. That means that means you first have to listen to Pokey Flips, then you have to listen to the Pokey Tea Time podcast. In that order specifically, definitely, Man. Go, definitely, <laughs> definitely go definitely go check them out. Definitely go give uh, them all the support. Uh, possible because these are really good people um to kind of close it out i'm gonna go ahead and quickly talk about our sponsors our first sponsor is kenley aka the pokemon network kenley pretty much has everything available I, I i don't know what he doesn't have uh the mans goes through things very very quickly uh between Yu Gi Oh and pokemon I, I think he's been trying to get into sports but um if you want to buy anything down from the lowest of lowest of cards the most affordable of cards down to the most expensive cards, uh, definitely contact him um, because he probably has it or he knows someone who has it. Uh, then another sponsor is TCG Stadium. TCG Stadium is a online card shop based in Nashville. They have multiple and numerous amounts of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon product. Definitely go check them out at tcgstadium.com. Our third sponsor is... Double Infinity Gaming. Double Infinity Gaming is a card shop, a online card shop based in Florida. Will and Julie are your go-to people when it comes to having any questions you want uh, answered when it comes to playing any sort of TCG. I think they have uh, the team. I think they have the resources. And I think they have basically the passion to basically tell you how, how to go about playing competitively. But they also have a numerous amounts of TCGs. So... Um, definitely go give them a follow on Instagram and on TikTok. And finally, this is not a sponsored, uh, uh, a sponsor, but I like working with them because I believe in, in 
creating value for for my community and for the Pokemon community as a whole, and that's the app called Collector. Collector is spelled C-O-L-L-E-C-T-R. Uh, Collector is an app that essentially tracks any any Pokemon card, any Pokemon product, any any TCG sealed, unsealed, whatever it is. You can track it on there. There's trends on there, and you can find Content Creators Corner. Where I'm available, I know uh, they advertise for good old Palatine Pokemon TCG from time to time, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, definitely go check them out. I love the uh, I love the app itself. Definitely go give it a download. It's free, so uh, yeah, it costs zero cents, zero zero dollars just to get it. And plus, it's just really cool just to track the value of your collection. But um, that's pretty much it as far as that goes. I feel like I spent like an hour talking about our sponsors, but. Um, do you guys have anything else to say? Definitely uh, plug yourselves in um, and let everyone know where to find you guys and whatever projects you guys are working on. And if you want to give us an alpha, uh, definitely do so too. Yeah, so just, um, you know, thank you. Thank you, Shiv, for having us on here and everything. We really do no, appreciate, appreciate it. We had a great, yeah, we had a great time talking with you and uh, hopefully we could do this again sometime too. And yeah. Um, you know, you guys can find me on Instagram, Palatown underscore Pokemon underscore TCG. Um, I have a YouTube, which I really don't do much on. Um, but also, you know, the Patreon that we share with, uh, you know, these guys right here and everything. But uh, yeah, feel free to uh, stop and talk to me at any time, too. <laughs> yep. And uh, pretty much just the same for me. Uh, you just find me on Instagram, Crystal Pokemon TCG. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, we'll be doing more videos with these guys and I appreciate you having us on and, uh, letting us talk. It was fun. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for having us, Shiv. Always, always enjoy talking Pokemon and these, these live, uh, live YouTube streams are an absolute blast. Thank you everyone in the chat for hanging out. Really do appreciate your time. And, uh, if you guys want to follow me on YouTube, uh, old school Pokemon, Pokey Flips, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, have an Instagram uh, and then an eBay store, obviously. School is spelt the cool way, S K O O L. But uh, but yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, for sure, no problem, guys. If you are listening to this podcast uh, through your ear holes, we are uh, available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure you give us a five star review. We also have a Discord as well. Um, I will be available at Collecticon as well. So if you want to see me, or if you do see me, stop me, say hello. I don't be afraid to say that. Um, and uh, on top of that, make sure you like comment and subscribe to the podcast because we do bring out weekly content and I'm trying to ramp up the amount of content on the channel. So I've been putting out on average, roughly around two videos a week. It's about to be three starting this week. So, uh, that way you guys get all the goods when it comes to, uh, pokey tea time. But besides that, um, I don't know if you guys know how I sign off the podcast when we go ahead and show you guys. Essentially, we like to have an imaginary teacup. So I'm going to have you guys hold up your teacup. Oh, pinky's out. Pinky's yeah, out. Pinky's out. Always pinky's oh, gotta, out. Gotta be fancy. Okay. You're going to you're gonna sip up. Then you're going to say deuces. And then you're going to salute out. So that's how we sign oh, off on the podcast every single time. So on three, sips up. Deuces. Deuces. And we're out. All right. See you guys in the next one. See Make you guys. sure you follow all these guys, all these wonderful gentlemen on their social media, as they stated. And uh, we'll see you guys next Tuesday on the next Pokey Tea Time podcast, where we do have a special guest coming up. I will reveal that very soon because it's 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 blanking right now. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys soon.